Red Bull, a team with lots of changes this year and a lot to prove if they want to win the championships. The RB15 is a very different car, but the key change obviously is the change to the Honda power unit, and this will really affect everything for the team, how reliable, how powerful, how easily they've been able to integrate it into the car. And on first looks, when we start to look at things like the side pods, we know that the Honda packaging has worked really well and the team have really managed to package everything at the back of the car in nice and tightly, nice and low to get the aero. So let's look at some of the clever little details that Red Bull have added to this car this year. First of all, wheelbase. The car doesn't appear to be too much longer than it was last year. It's still relatively short, certainly in contrast to people like Ferrari and Mercedes, but it runs a lot of rake, and this really has been Red Bull's big technical solution to try and get downforce from underneath the car and ease up on the wings, particularly when they've been on a down on power engines. There's no reason to think Honda will have a bad engine this year, but certainly we don't think they'll have the same level of power available to them, particularly in qualifying, that Mercedes and Ferrari have had. Around the front end, this is where we see some of the clever aerodynamics coming into play. At the front wing, again, is what I describe as this version one front wing. It's five elements, it's as simple as the regulations will allow. This will no doubt change, become a lot more complicated in the details and how it works. So we'll discard the talking about the front wing for now. The nose, very similar at first, look to last year's with the vented nose hole at the front to improve airflow underneath. But Red Bull have done something else to improve this airflow underneath the front of the car. Nearly every team run an S-duct, which takes inlets from under the nose and ducts it all the way through to an outlet over the nose. What this is used for is to clean up the airflow coming up under the nose, particularly that that gets disturbed by the front wing. Normally, it's fairly straightforward. You just have a rear-facing outlet at the top. What we can see here is the S-duct outlet has been changed. Normally it's just a rear-facing outlet which just vents the air being picked up from underneath into a low pressure area and just cleans up the airflow slightly over the top, but it's much more about underneath the nose. But Red Bull have fitted a little flap, as you can see, with an inlet and an outlet over the S-duct outlet. And what this does is lower the pressure behind the duct, which pulls even more air through the duct setup, which means the effect under the nose will be even more marked. And you can see a fairly straightforward change like this is something that lots of other teams could quite easily adopt if they wanted to do it through the year. Another thing we need to look at is the front wheels. We know that you can't blow air through a hollow axle anymore, and the whole centre of the wheel is now banned from blowing air. But we do see holes drilled around the front axle on the uh, wheel here. And this is the same on the Toro Rosso, rather interestingly, so we presume that they're using the same components. Now, if there is any air coming out of this, that's against the regulations because it's outboard of the wheel nut. So we'll have to see during testing what Red Bull are doing in this area. When we look to the middle of the car, the side pods are very much what we've seen from Red Bull in the past few seasons. Uh, last year they switched to the high inlet setup and most of the bodywork around the inlet here is very similar. It's very, very high, huge undercut. And then, which has been very much uh, a Red Bull trademark, an Adrian Newey trademark for many years, is the shape of the side pods. And you can see what I call as jelly molded. They fold down to the floor. There's no undercut going around the side of the side pods here. And this just allows all the air to go down and into this big gap under the Coke bottle and over the diffuser. More airflow creates more pressure, which means you get more downforce just from the shape of the side pods affecting the diffuser. It's very hard to see, obviously, because you've got this one-off livery, which uh, will hopefully be there for testing. But certainly when we come to Melbourne, they'll be back to our more traditional colour scheme that we can all recognise. Now, barge boards and lots of the other cars we've seen haven't been something really to discuss because it's something on the digital images that they've produced are very easy to change, very easy to remove and hide bits and pieces. This is Red Bull testing, so we know already that these parts have been made, so they've made some effort to make them work. Now, there's a regulation change here now, so you can't have any bodywork higher than this, and the area starts from the pod vein, comes forward to the wheels, and comes very close, but not right up to the bodywork of the chassis of the side here by Aston Martin. If you can fit bodywork in that tiny gap, then you can have higher bodywork. And what Red Bull have done here, despite it looking like it's the stickers playing with their mind, which is what I first thought when I saw this, is you can see they've got a higher piece of bodywork, very close to the bodywork, won't be quite as influential as the bodywork last year that could be a bit further out, but still just shows that people will put bodywork into any loophole in the bodywork regulations that they're able to. Also, with the lower height, Red Bull have still managed to get this what we call the boomerang, like a big swoopy arm coming out to go as high up as it possibly can on the barge boards. And again, this is a wing shape which creates downwash, which pushes air downwards 
into the undercut, around the side pods and over the diffuser to create more downforce. So again, solutions creating downwash in this area is something that everyone will be trying to play with, trying to make the barge boards do so much more work that the front wing isn't allowed to do now. And this shot from the Red Bull Shakedown just shows some details at the rear of the car. You can see the exhaust, which is relatively high mounted. I don't think this is an aerodynamic thing trying to blow the rear wing. It's just how they've packaged the exhaust to fit in with the position of the rear wishbones, which are quite high up, which that in itself is an aerodynamic solution, much less to do with the geometry. So the exhaust is quite high. And then they bring the wastegate exhaust, very hard to see in this picture, unfortunately, because of the lighting, come under the rear wishbones at the top. Uh, and just blow out when the wastegate's open. This angle is one that I really love when we can get pictures on track and you can actually see the effect of all of the barge boards and the undercut shaping to push air around the car. Always a good angle to understand what teams are doing aerodynamically like this. So the RB15, the question is will it be fast enough to win a championship? Will it be challenging Mercedes and Ferrari? The big question mark has to be the Honda power unit. Will it have the power? Will it have the reliability? I think there's very little doubt that Red Bull can produce a chassis that's good enough, although they do have the new Pirelli tyres to cope with, but they were very good with their tyres last year, which historically has been something of a weak point for Red Bull coping with uh, tyre changes. I think what we'll find is this car will be fast. The question is how many race finishes it will it get? That is going to be the big question mark, and that will really decide how close they get to the top two teams in the championship this year.